Hey everyone, I wanted to make a quick video going over the features of Blender Light Gun and how it can be used and how it could be helpful for setting up lights in big scenes. Blender Light Gun has some pretty main features, one of which is the different modes that it can create lights from. Um, the main idea of Blender Light Gun is using a camera to shoot lights onto surfaces very quickly. So if I have this camera here that's active in my scene, I can tell it's my active camera by this icon here. I can then go to camera mode, press shift and tilde to control it with my mouse. I can then aim at a surface, click a button, and it then shoots a light directly onto that surface. And it calculates the normal of the face mesh of that surface as well. So that way if I go to let's say a spotlight, I aim it at the ceiling, I create a light, it is now normal to that surface. And it works for surfaces like spheres, cones, pretty much any surface at all it'll work on. Like that. Okay. Now, it's really annoying to have to adjust your light after you make it, you know, redo your settings and create a new light. So I wanted to be able to make that faster uh, rather than just editing. So I added preview mode, which does a ton of calculations per second. Uh, wherever the camera's looking, it'll create a brand new light with that new data. So if I wanted to, let's say, make a cone spotlight on this cone here, I can see that it's updating in real time, normal to the surface of these surfaces. So if I wanted a, a line of lights over here in the corner, I also have linked lights together on, so you can toggle if they link together or not. So let's link them. So I'll create this spotlight here. Create a spotlight here. Create a spotlight here. And we'll create a spotlight over there. All right, we'll turn preview mode off. We now have these lights, they're linked together. And when you select a light, you'll notice an additional panel shows up called edited light properties. You can then edit the name of these lights, okay? These also, these lights show up in a linked collection together. So that way you, your lights are organized. All right, and I can go test. I can then go here and see that this is named test. Now I can then change this to point if I want to, because they're all linked together. Let's say I want uh, point lights. I want to switch to color for Kelvin and I want to make them colder or warmer or increment their power by 20%. You can do that. Now, another thing that light gun can do, which is one of my favorite features, it took a long time to pr actually program it, um, but you can do orbit mode, which is great for characters. So if I go to preview mode, change none mode to orbit, it then creates an empty object at the point of intersection and then casts a light a certain distance, which you can toggle here, from that point facing opposite of normal, right? So now you can adjust a spotlight that's exactly the distance from your character that you want. You can change the power of said light as well. Make it as, there you go, make it as bright as you want. Change the spot size, make it as fine as you want, make it as big as you want, change the radius, all that stuff. Okay, but then what's cool is let's say you want it to be really close to your character and you create the light, right? And then you can target this empty object here and you can now pose this light at a very specific angle on your character and it'll pivot on that, that point that you targeted with your camera. That way you can get, you know, really quick different lighting going for your character. And I guess I linked these together, so technically the, <laughs> you can change their colors too, but you get the idea. So that's orbit mode. Orbit mode is really cool for um, character lighting. So if I have like Master Chief here, and I wanted to get it a little bit of a warmer color on him, get a little preview mode going here, create a light, turn off preview mode, press R on the keyboard twice. I can now get a light that focuses exactly at that point. But I can then pivot exactly how I want it to. Like that. So now I've talked about none mode, 
which creates a light exactly on the surface that is normal to the surface. I've talked about orbit mode, which creates an empty object and creates a light normal from that surface at a certain distance, which you can rotate. And then there's also camera position mode, which creates a light exactly where the camera is. So that way if you hit preview mode, you can basically become the light and get it exactly as you want it. So if I wanted to get here, I wanted to get it spot size to be a certain size here. I want the color to be, let's say RGB. I want it to be green, right? I want it to be a little darker. There we go. And maybe the radius up a bit. There we go. Okay. I can then create that light. Turn off preview mode. Go out here. And you will see that I created a spotlight exactly where the camera is. So that way you can be the camera. Control how you want your shots. Exactly how you want your colors. And see in real time how it affects and lights your object. Like that. And this works for suns, so like if I wanted to make a sun for my scene, I can then go temperature, make a little darker, right? And I'm a sun, so I can turn preview mode on. Get way out of my scene here. I might have to hit my max render distance, but you get the idea. So like if I'm a sun, I can go up here, aim at my sun exactly where I want. Okay, I change anything I want within here, and then I can create that sun. If I check right here, I have now made a sun that is pointing directly where I wanted it to, which is lighting my scene. Okay. So there is that. Now, another thing I've added as well is Frustrum calculations. So let's say you have your camera and you really like your scene. You really like what's going on in your scene. So let's say I have a camera here. I select the camera. You'll now see these options. And I have a thing where it's called Enable FOV Frustrum. I think, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but I don't really care. You click that. It then casts a projection and a calculation of the FOV that the camera sees in real time. So that way you can adjust your camera settings. And it'll adjust the Frustrum in real time. That way you can see the region that's actually in your render. So if I go to camera mode, you'll see this is what the camera sees. But this way you don't have to keep going back to your camera to make sure that your characters are in your scene or not. So if I was to go here like, oh, Master Chief's not in the shot yet. Or let's say I have it, you know, I want it to be 80 millimeters shot. All right. And then I go in here and I go, I have to go, oh, you know, good. Everything's in my shot here. Let's say you had a character over here, you wouldn't have to go to the camera every time. You just have to make sure that this line intersects your character so that your character's on the inside and you know he's in your shot. That way you can set these cameras up as many as you want, project them onto your scene, and then build your scene within the, the bounds of your render. That way you know it's in your shot and you're not messing up and not wasting your time. Okay? click. You can also make it more opaque if you want. I don't know why you'd want to, but I just added that as an example. You disable it. You can also add depth of field. Okay. So if I, let's say I want this camera here, and I know photographer has the ability to um, add a focus plane, which I thought was super cool. So I added a focus plane as well. So a little plane that you can adjust, right? You can bring it closer and you can tell that it's, that's where the focus distance is set to. However, one thing I thought was really neat was since this my whole app shoots raycasts and does calculations, I had an ability to um, aim a camera, click a button, and it will detect instantly the focus distance at that point and do a calculation. So let's say I aim at Chief over there, detect, boom. Now he is instantly where the focus plane is, and I'll demonstrate it with the focus plane as well. So you can click over here, detect focus distance, boom. Focus distance is set instantly. So that way you don't even have to slide. You can just make sure that your uh, stuff is in shot. There you go. 
Super easy. Right. Another thing I've added to this is global volumetrics toggle. And it's nothing fancy, it just adds a uh, volume to the world shader, essentially. Um, but let's say go to spotlight, make it go to orbit mode. Let's say I wanted to target this torus here. And another thing to make it a little quicker as well is you can actually right click on these buttons and assign them a shortcut. So I've assigned them to a mouse key, so I can just click, 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 click. That way I have all of the lights really quickly made. And then I added volumetrics here. So global volumetrics, probably see it a little bit better if it's actually here in render mode. But there's some density options. There's some anister beam options as well. I don't know if this is gonna render even fast enough, but you get the idea. If you've messed with, with uh, volumes in the world shader, you'll know what that does. So I hope this was helpful. Uh, I plan to add more to it and I'm gonna be releasing this for free uh, probably today or uh, tomorrow. So look out for that and reach out if you have any questions or features you'd like to see in the add-on. Thanks.